Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of chemistry, which will be very helpful in solving uh, similar questions for the VIT AAA exam. So let's start off today with our first question. One propanol and two propanol can be distinguished by oxidation with alkaline KMnO4 followed by reaction with failing solution, oxidation with acidic dichromate followed by reaction with failing solution, oxidation by heating with copper followed by reaction with failing solution, oxidation with concentrated H2SO4 followed by reaction with failing solution. So, which of these is the correct option? Now, first of all, let's differentiate 1-propanol and 2-propanol. 1-propanol has the structure CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. This is the structure for 1-propanol. Now, for 2-propanol, the structure would go CH3, CH, OH, CH3. The reason why it's called 1-propanol and 2-propanol is because the fun is because of the functional group attaching to the carbon. One propanol is attached to the uh, one of the carbons at the extreme, at, at the you know end of the chain, while two propanol is attaching itself to the middle of the carbon chain. Prop because there are only three carbon atoms, and OL is because of the functional group itself, which is an alcohol. So, how do we distinguish one propanol and two propanol? For that, we need to oxidize it and then react it with failing solution. The failing solution bit is for differentiated be between aldehydes and ketones. So if we were to um, convert these alcohols into aldehydes and ketones, then the failing solution would help us differentiate it. So which of these would be the correct option? Now when it comes to oxidation, if you look at oxidation with concentrated H2SO4, it is a bad idea. The reason being that if you take one propanol or two propanol, and oxidized it with concentrated H2SO4, they are going to give you the same um, the same product, which is CH3, CH, double bond, CH3, which is propene. Now, this is an alkene and not an aldehyde or ketone, so it doesn't go with failing solution. That's one bit. And the other bit is both, both of these compounds, 1-propanol and 2-propanol, gives us the same alkene after oxidation with concentrated H2SO4. So, therefore, option D is not the right option. Now let's look at options A and B together. Now in both of these cases we either use KMnO4 and acidic dichromate together. I mean we either use alkaline KMnO4 or acidic dichromate on both the compounds. Now the problem with both of these compounds is that when you put them in excess they give you carboxylic acid. For example if we take 2-propanol, I mean, if we take 1-propanol, so that's CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, and then if you react it with alkaline KMnO4 or acidic dichromate, What you get f at first is an aldehyde, which is propanal. But on excess of these two, of either of these two reagents, you're going to get the carboxylic acid CH3, CH2, COOH. That's propanoic acid. And when you put the carboxylic acid in failing solution. there's going to be no reaction. 
Similar story with 2-propanol. So if you have 2-propanol here, and you react it with alkaline KMnO4, or acidic dichromate, you're going to get um, the ketone for this, which is propanone. Which is get great, right? You can put it in failing solution. However, if you put it in excess, if you put these reagents in excess, you're going to get the carboxylic acid, which in this case is ethanoic acid or vinegar. And when you put ethanoic acid in failing solution, once again, it's going to give you no reaction. So therefore, in both these cases, the two compounds would give no reaction in, in the terms of failing solution. So therefore, both A and B are wrong. Because both of these um, reagents, they, in excess, turn the uh, alcohols into carboxylic acids. So therefore both A and B are incorrect and we already proved that D is incorrect. So that means C is the right option. Oxidation by heating with copper followed by reaction with failing solution. So that is the right option. So from there you can al al already prove that option C is the right option. Now for those of you who are doubting this, let's write the reaction down. CH3, CH2, CH2OH. So firstly, we heat it up with copper. So what we're getting is CH3, CH2, CHO. So we're getting the aldehyde here, propanal. Now in this case, even if you increase the reagent, it, it's not going to be turning itself into carboxylic acid. It's going to stay as an aldehyde. And when you put the aldehyde in Phalanx solution, you're going to get CH3, COO minus plus water, I think it's three times water, and you get CO2O, copper oxide, the red, the red copper oxide, which is a precipitate. So therefore, there's going to be a red color to the solution, to this compound when you put failing solution after oxidizing it. Okay. Now what happens with 2-propanol? With 2-propanol, when you heat it with copper, you get the ketone, and it does not change into a car the carboxylic acid. And a ketone in failing solution has no reaction. Now, even though the previous, you know, in A and B, the ketone had no reaction, in C, the aldehyde and the ketone can be differentiated based on adding failing solution. If you add failing solution with the aldehyde, it turns red. But if you add, add it with failing, add the failing solution to ketone, there is no reaction. So, no color change. And that's why option C is the best way to distinguish 1-propanol and 2-propanol. The problem with A and B is you need to be careful with the reagents, otherwise, in excess, they become carboxylic acid, and you cannot distinguish it with failing solution. So that's why A and B are incorrect. And with D, the oxidation turns in, turns the compound, both these compounds, into the same alkene, which is propene, which means that reaction with failing solution would not yield any results. So therefore, option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option C. Oxidation by heating with copper followed by reaction with failing solution is the way to distinguish one propanol and two propanol. Next question, which group contains colored ions out of? So we have four ions here. We need to find out which of these are colored. We have one, two, three, four is option A, one, three, four is option B, two, three is option C, one, two is option D. Now, we need to get colored ions. Now for colored ions, they need to have electrons in the 3D orbital. So if you take 
copper 2 plus, two electrons are taken from the s orbital. So therefore, its electronic configuration would go the configuration of argon followed by 3d9. So this is how the configuration looks like. Now argon is the closest um, is the closest um, noble gas that's right below the element, and that's why we use it to get all the previous you know configurations. We can all write write the previous configurations as that of argon, so it saves us time. Now what about titanium four plus? In titanium four plus. Um, firstly, it takes the electrons out of the two out of four s. Then you have three d two, and then it takes the two electrons from there. So therefore, the d the three d orbital will have zero electrons. Next, we have cobalt two plus. Cobalt is uh, twenty seven. So we take two electrons out of the four s orbital. So you have three d seven after the configuration for argon. Similarly for ion, ion is 26. Again, you take the electrons out of the 4s orbital, so the 3d will still have six electrons. So this is how the electronic configuration looks like, and for, config and for colored ions, the 3d orbital should have electrons. So as you can see, Cu2 plus has electrons in the 3d orbital, CO2 plus and Fe2 plus also has, you know, electrons in the 3d orbital. So therefore, 1, 3, and 4 are colored electrons. 2 is not a colored elect 2 does not is a, not a colored ion because of the fact that there is no electron in the 3d orbital after forming the ion. So therefore, option B, 1, 3, 4 is the right option. Any option with 2 is incorrect because we found out that since titanium doesn't titanium ion the titanium ion doesn't have any 3d electrons it is not a colored ion so therefore any option with 2 is incorrect and that includes options a c and d which is why option b is the right option now let's look at the final question for the day a mixture of benzaldehyde and formaldehyde on heating with aqueous NaOH solution gives benzyl alcohol and sodium formate, sodium benzoate and methyl alcohol, sodium benzoate and sodium formate, benzyl alcohol and methyl alcohol. Now, before writing down the reaction, we need to find out whether, when it comes to heating with aqueous NaOH, we need to make sure whether there is an alpha hydrogen present between any of the two aldehydes. Now, if you look at benzaldehyde, this this would be the structure for benzaldehyde. CHO. So, what is an alpha hydrogen? An alpha hydrogen is any hydrogen that's attached to an alpha carbon. Now, an alpha carbon is basically the carbon that is attached to a functional group. So, in benzaldehyde, CHO is the functional group. This dot right here represents the alpha carbon, and if you can see here, it already has four bonds with other carbons, so therefore there is no alpha hydrogen there. Similarly, in formaldehyde, it's represented as HCHO, there is no alpha hydrogen, alpha carbon here. So therefore, we have no alpha hydrogen in any of the two aldehydes, so therefore, heating with aqueous NaOH solution is basically the Cannizzaro reaction. Now if there were alpha hydrogen then the reaction would change, it would become aldol con condensation. So now that we know that we're dealing using Cannizzaro reaction, let's jump right in. So therefore benzaldehyde plus formaldehyde on heating with aqueous NaOH. So in this particular case, the NaOH solution would oxidize formaldehyde. And it would reduce benzaldehyde. 
So when formaldehyde is oxidized by the sodium, it becomes H-C-O-O-N-A, which is sodium formate. So any option without sodium formate is wrong. That includes B and D. So we need to find out whether it's sodium benzoate or benzyl alcohol. Now, we said that benzaldehyde gets reduced. So that means um, we have an extra OH which is added to the functional group of benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde turns into benzyl alcohol. So CHO turns into CH2OH. This is benzyl alcohol. So therefore, option C is also incorrect. The right answer is option A, benzyl alcohol and sodium formate. So aldehyde when reduced turns into alcohol. Aldehyde when oxidized turns into a formate, which is basically um, the salt of an ester, salt of a carboxylic acid. So that's how you can oxidize and reduce aldehydes. And in this particular case, we're using Canizaro's reaction because there is no alpha hydrogen present in either of the two aldehydes. So that is the correct option for this question, option A. We hope you found this episode interesting. That's all for today. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. You can also hit the notifications icon, which is present down below, in order to receive the latest updates from our channel, whether that has to do with Witty Workshop or with any other playlist. So, until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.